Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been continuing working on the Western Friend website, content migrators. We have content in Drupal of various types and structure and need to bring that over to Wagtail and fit that into the Django and Wagtail data model that we've defined. Uh, oh, I've got some nice lint here that I will uh, have to go through. This pull request is still a work in progress, but I just want to recap the progress that was made today. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle and a lot of um, head scratching, and, uh, but learned a lot and feel like it's in a good place right now. So I'm just going to re read through these in the order that they are, like um, as the files are organized alphabetically. This is the bulk of it, of the work though, is this memorials importer. And essentially it's just a Django admin uh, command. And the name of the command is basically the file name. Above the def command definition, I just have some helper functions to help me organize the code. Let me see if I change this to like unified, if it's easier to read. Give me the full width. It's a little cleaner that way. So yeah, we, here we have just some imports. It, we're parsing data from a CSV, so we need that. We're handling some date strings a little bit further down. We're defining these commands, uh, these Django administration commands. And this gives us a way of um, visually uh, iterating over the changes. Once the content is imported, it looks like this. It displays on the um, memorials page, as well as in the Wagtail admin the memorial section and lets you edit them and, and things like that these the content structure has a title which is how the person's name should be displayed in the uh, memorial and a foreign key to a person in our contacts um, people collection or date uh, table as these da optional dates of birth and death it's not always known so we've made those optional and we have a thing here to indicate when they're approximate. And the content here comes from the minute itself. So I'll have to double check that all the content is being imported correctly. I haven't actually done that. Put that on the to do. Something like that. Because that doesn't look correct. Looks like I got the first paragraph, but not the rest of it. And then there's a foreign key to the meaning. So again, this is a work in progress. There's a lot of um, nuances that I've had to work out. When you view the minute, it shows the same information. This will eventually be a link to the um, meeting itself. And likewise, we should be able to link to a profile for the person that might show other related content like articles they've written, things like that. And we're basically rebuilding this um, memorial feature in the, the Drupal website with some improvements. So we'll continue just reviewing the code real quick. and. It's 10 files, but I think some of them are just smaller changes. So when we create a person, uh, this I'll read through these helpers and then read through the um, body of the command. We're using the Wagtail page model. So we actually need to, to nest the people under an index page or some kind of parent page. The person content needs to go under an index page or person index page. Here we're setting the as none initially so that we can have a safety check outside of this function that would halt or skip the um, current item in the control flow so we can move on to the next one in case of finding errors. So we get this index page and we should just try creating a person in this one. We're going to call this from another function in a moment. And if any exception occurs, uh, which this is pretty minimal, it's not likely, uh, we'll just print that to out and then we're going to add that 
person as a child of the person index page. So everything is nice and organized and then save the index page, which also um, saves the person. And we'll return that person or none. So similarly, we are looking for a memorial meeting, which is the affiliation. So we have a, we're going to try having none as a sensible default. We'll try uh, getting that meeting, so get the memorial meeting or none and we'll throw an error and we'll get or create the memorial person. This is going to take a couple of methods. So again, for safety and allow us to uh, continue the flow control, we'll return none as sort of a default. And in our data, we have basically a field that contains the article author ID and mostly the value is not applicable because a lot of the, most of the memorials didn't end up publishing any articles. But in the case it's not, we want to get that person um, by author ID. In the CSV, is a, everything's a string. There's no data type, so I just need to cast it here to a data type, to an integer. And if we couldn't, um, or in other words, if we didn't need to create, I'm uh, sorry, find somebody, get the uh, person, we will create them. That was the function up here single purpose function. Yeah, and those are basically the helpers. We have a command that takes a file argument and handles handles it. This is the bulk of the work. Um, all the memorials are also part of a tree model, the page tree model, and there's an index page that contains all of those. We're going to read that um, CSV files, a, dictionary, a list of dictionaries, and we're going to iterate over those, uh, the data from each of those dictionaries. And this is gonna give us a progress indicator. And we'll first we'll check if it exists, the memorial. That way we can rerun this importer and just update existing data without having to kind of drop and recreate everything. Otherwise, we're gonna create one. The title is gonna be the combination of first and last name. And the memorial ID is gonna be an integer. This lets us kind of um, keep track of which ones have been imported so that we can uh, rerun this script, for example. And then we're going to use that helper function to get or create the person. We pretty much always need one. So if, if we're not able to, for whatever reason, get or create that person, we're just going to continue along the flow of this iter the importer. So it's going to just skip to the next record. Uh, but then in, any, in the case that we're able to get or create that person, we're going to start creating the um, other fields on the memorial, like the title field from the first and last name. I could use F string here. I should would be consistent anyway um, the memorial minute it's going to take that data the body and I, I've got to double check that that body is being parsed correctly it's basically raw HTML that was exported from Drupal um, but I think Wagtail is going to sanitize that and only let certain care uh, certain tags pass through so I mean I need to make sure that the sanitization is not actually just discarding child tags for example if a span can't pass through and it um, you know discards some weird nested markup from, the, from Drupal. I might have to get more um, advanced in my how I handle that. Uh, then we have these dates, these date time um, data for the dates of birth and death. And uh, it's in this format, date time format. And what we're going to do is, in the case that it exists, because it doesn't exist on every field, so when it's not empty, we're going to strip the time off there because we're only really concerned with creating a date. Um, the Drupal doesn't have just a date object. It only had date time objects, I guess. So we had to kind of jump or some, uh, through some hoops to get that to work. And uh, so yeah, we just stripped the time off the date of birth and using this format. In the same case for the date of death, um, both of which could be missing. Uh, most likely the date of birth is missing. The date of death is usually known more accurately, but there's also, we want to know or let people know when the dates are approximate. And we're just going to add this, uh, their meeting is, uh, again, the affiliated meeting. Uh, we're going to get it or none. And this field, I think, should not be optional, but there are at least a couple of examples in the data where the there was no memorial meeting. so. I loosened up the restriction there on the data. We're going to have to come back to that to see if that's uh, something we want to allow. I, th I think we, we should allow it, uh, at least in the data model. Uh, so the business logic shouldn't really be too strict about it. But I think the memorial person is um, 
pretty essential. Uh, but we could loosen that one up as well. Uh, and then, so we're gonna uh, basically, if the if it doesn't exist, we know we need to add it as the memorial as a child of the memorial index page. If it does exist, then we can just save it because it should already be in position on the tree. Um, in in the case where we add it to the uh, memorial index page, we just save the memorial index page, which I believe will cascadingly save the memorial itself as well, because it has to update an attribute on the memorial, um, indicating what the level of the tree is or something. It's some internal uh, field that Wagtail uses. We've got a couple migrations here. Uh, we're cleaning up the data model. We switched over to using a, um, a foreign key to the person model. So the first or family and given name are actually on the person model. So we just remove those from the memorial and we use the title as a combination of the two. Then on the memorial, we added a memorial person. So here's that foreign key to the contact person field. And likewise, we, let's see, added a field um, display name. I actually just added this and removed it. Uh, and realizing that I needed to um, just use the title as the display name. Uh, so I might squash these migrations at some point. Then we need to keep track of the metadata. So on the memorial, we're gonna keep track of the, um, the Drupal internal identifier during the migration process. Once we've migrated and start entering memorials directly in Wagtail, this will no longer be necessary. But yeah, as a general thing, when you're migrating data from one CMS to Wagtail or one CMS to another, keep that internal metadata in place, the most accurate identifying characteristic, usually an ID field, like an integer field, so that um, you can just make sure everything is imported correctly and rerun things because you'll have to rerun it through the development process. And potentially, you know, even when the site's live, you might need to, you might realize you made a big mistake and need to rerun that importer on the, on the live Wagtail site, for example. Um, so then I just removed that display name field again because I realized the title field was going to be sufficient for that. Added the dates or uh, default value of the dates or approximate field defaulting to false. I think most of the cases, um, the, the default, uh, sorry, the dates or approximate was not true. Basically, it was empty. Um, so that means the dates were known accurately. And so following the principle of least astonishment, uh, even though this is a mild, Form, would be a mild form of astonishment. I just make the default um, false, and that means the checkbox is also unchecked in the user interface by default. Um, let's see, then we're going to alter a field memorial, meaning there's a foreign key allowing it to be blank and true because there was like one or two cases where there wasn't a memorial meeting, and I loosened up that constraint. We need to look at the data to see if that's an error in the data, and if we want to allow that in the, in the business logic or the data model, which I think should be fine to leave as optional. And I think we did that with these date fields and blank and true, null, null is true, uh, because there are some examples, particularly in the date of birth, where that didn't exist. And when I wrote the data model, I didn't have this experience of importing the data. So that stuff gets cleaned up and improved on along the way. Uh, then we made the, all these changes to the memorial. So you can just see the, basically what the migration is described, making them nullable and uh, the foreign key relationship, so I'm not going to describe these. There's this full name. Um, since I had removed the um, given name and family name from the memorial model, then we just needed to traverse from the self to the memorial person to get the given family name through that foreign key relationship, which also means that that's a mandatory relationship. Otherwise, this this full name function won't work. And this is used uh, at least in the user interface when we're viewing the memorials, I believe over here, the full name function is invoked. And then let's go back to the code. So, oh, actually we were on GitHub, <laughs> my bad. Uh, that's it, and just using the proper field widget. This page chooser, since we're using a foreign key now, we want to be able to select them, and Wagtail has a built-in page chooser that lets you um, search and filter, uh, and then select, and it's a pretty nice widget, so we're just using that off of the box. Uh, I removed these uh, search fields, the given name and family name, since they were no longer on the model. I did leave, and I, I don't tend to do this, but I left that commented code 
And just to, as a reminder here to see if there, we do want to um, add any indexing, such as on the, uh, the Memorial Minute Rich Text field. And then there, I was overriding the save function and setting the title, but now we're using the title directly. So we're actually using these page content panels, which um, as you can see, displays the title field by default. So I didn't need to create that behind the scenes any longer. And that's, I guess, it. It's been pretty challenging. The, again, the pull request is a work in progress. It's a draft. Um, I think it's pretty close to being done. I'm going to have to just go through this checklist and make sure that we, um, you know, we're pretty thorough on the work. But yeah, about two and a half hours, I guess, on that. And, um, some progress. That means that this code is reusable, though. So feel free to check it out and uh, see if it's relevant to the projects you're working on. Again, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Thanks for stopping by. And if you want to get involved in the CodeBuddies community, you can check out what hangouts are scheduled and join any of these uh, activity groups that might suit your interests. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.